Welcome to Bismart Together. I mainly focus on Power Query and Excel. If you new, please subscribe and turn on the notification. Also, feel free to drop a comment to give feedback, ask questions or let me know if there are any topics you're interested in. Today, I want to share the chart I created in Power BI and thought to experiment in Excel with DAX. Also, I want to show you how I usually create charts with the dynamic array formula. The first chart was created with DAX in Power Pivot. We have four sample charts. The top left line chart highlights the changes between the two periods. The bottom left chart highlights the highest and lowest sales periods. The charts on the right highlight the highest and lowest sales periods while separating actual and forecast. If you select a different range of periods, you will get the percentage of changes for the selected range. If you update the current period, the separation between actual and forecast will be updated. Now, let us look at the dynamic array methods. The chart on the top highlights the highest and lowest sales periods, whereas the chart on the bottom highlights the percentage changes between the two periods. If you update the current period, the separation between actual and forecast will be updated. If you select a different range of periods, you will get the percentage of changes for the selected range. Here is the data used in the chart. Let me walk you through how I created the pivot chart. The bottom left chart is the easiest, so let us start from that one. The chart is purely created with a stacked column chart, and we use three measures in this chart. If you look at the measure presented in the pivot table, you will see the measure only appears once per period with no duplication across measures, so you always get one column when you stack them. Let's switch over to the power pivot for the calculation. The first measure we want to look at is the highest sales. We use the all selected function to help us remove the filter at the month level, the calculate function to override the calculation, and the maxx function to get the max sales value by month. It is the same for the lowest sales measure. The only difference is we use the minute x instead of max x. Those two measures are helper measures. It looks like this if you put the measure in the pivot table. You get the same sales value for every month, and the values are the maximum or minimum sales periods value. The next measure is to get the sales by month, excluding the highest and lowest sales. To achieve it, we can write the conditional formula to test whether the total sales are equal to the highest or lowest sales values we calculated from the helper measures. We want the value to be blank if it is true, otherwise, return the sales value. To get only the highest sales value, the logic for the conditional statement is if the total sales are equal to the highest sales, then return the highest sales or total sales, otherwise, return blank. For the lowest sales value, the logic for the conditional statement is if the total sales are equal to the lowest sales, then return the lowest sales or total sales, otherwise, return blank. The next chart we want to look at is the actual and forecast chart on the top right. It is purely created with the line chart, and there are four measures, actual, forecast, highest and lowest sales. We can continue to use the highest and lowest sales measures from the previous chart. We need an input date for actual and forecast measures to tell when the line needs to be cut off. The current period is the input date and is from the current period table. The current period table is imported from Excel. In the current periods measure, we applied the max function to get the last date from the current period date table, which the measure can be driven by the slicer. I will show you more when we switch to the front end. Let's look at the actual measure. We use the filter function to filter for the sales before the current period, then sum the sales and override the context with the calculate function. We will write a similar formula for the forecast measure as well. This is a pivot table, pivoting the table from the data tab, the current period table, which is imported into the power pivot as an input to help calculate the actual and forecast measure for dynamic purposes. If you move the timeline slicer away, I have another date slicer hidden behind it. This slicer helps to connect the pivot table and charts, so when we select the date from the pivot table, the filter will sync with the charts. The max function will return the selected date as an input to the actual and forecast measures. 
To connect the slicer with the pivot table and pivot charts, you can right click on the slicer and use the report connection. Once the connection is established, you can select a date from the selection list and the pivot chart will be updated according to your selection. The chart on the bottom right is constructed with the combo chart. We use line charts for sales and area charts to highlight the forecast periods. There is only one additional measure compared to the pivot chart above. Let's switch over to the power pivot for the forecast range measure. The logic statement in the measure is if the sales periods are inclusive and post current period, then return the highest sales times 130% so that we will get a horizontal line higher than any points in the chart and otherwise return blank. Finally, we get to the last chart on the left which is the most challenging chart on the top left. It was constructed with a combination of line charts and stacked column charts. There are five measures, and the sales measure is repeated. One sales measure is for the line chart and another is for the stacked column chart as selected. The vertical line charts are stacked on the sales column and are used as the indicator for two periods. I applied images to the vertical line measure. I sourced the image online, and the search keyword is vertical line. The second last measure is the horizontal line measure, which is a horizontal line joining the vertical lines. The last measure helps us to show the percentage changes between the two periods. Also, I have hidden some calculations behind the chart. I will explain the calculations in a minute. How do you make the label show the change percentage? Double click on the label, the last option allows you to make a reference within Excel. In our case, I reference those cells. The logic for those cells is if it is a midpoint period, that is, between the start and end date, then return the percentage of the changes between two periods, and otherwise, return blank. To get the changes percent, I use the cube value function to retrieve the measure and link it with the timeline slicer. I did the same thing for the start date and the end date. It is time to switch over to the power pivot for the measures. Let's start with the start date. We applied the minute function to get the earliest date from the date table. The date table is imported from the data tab. For the end date measure, we applied the max function to get the latest date from the date table. After we have the start and end date measures, we need a measure for the midpoint, which is for the label. The next measures are helper measures we calculate the sales value for the starting and ending points. The logic statement is if the start or end period is equal to the period from the input field, then return the period sales, and otherwise, return blank. The next measure calculates the changes in sales between the two selected periods. We use the divide function to divide the sales value from the ends measure by the starts measure. The vertical line measure calculates the value for the stacked column. The goal is to get two values representing the two vertical lines in the chart. The logic statement is if the sales value is equal to the value from the start or ends measures, then return the highest sales time 110% and subtract the period sales, which will give you the gap value between the horizontal line and the period sales, and otherwise, return blank. The second last measure is to calculate the value for the horizontal lines. The logic statement is if the dates are between the start and end date from the input field, then return the highest sales time 110, and otherwise, return blank. The last measure is to calculate the position of the label where we want to display the percentage of sales changes between two periods. The logic statement is if the date is the midpoint period, then return the highest sales times 110, and otherwise, return blank. One quick tip, you can set the horizontal line 20 to 30% higher than the highest sales value. It is up to you and there is no set rule. Now, let us move over to the dynamic array method. As in previous charts, we need the current period, start date and end date as input fields for the charts for interactive purposes. Part of the input field is hidden behind the slicer. The chart on the top was constructed with stacked column, line and area charts. The data for the chart is hidden behind the second chart. Before we go through the data, I want to explain how I constructed the lollipop chart. The trick to getting the lollipop stick is to select the date axis, and the base has to be days. 
If you select the content on the chart, it will highlight the source. Just a quick reminder that this is our sample data set in the data tab. I used the text function to convert the date column into a month and year text format, applied the unique function to remove duplication, and then used the value function to convert it back to date format. Once I get the list of month, I used the sumif function within the lambda function, and then applied it to chart data with the map function to get the total sales. If you're not familiar with dynamic array formula, you can simply write the sumif formula. The next column is the sales, excluding the highest and lowest sales. The logic statement is if the highest and lowest sales are not available, then return blank, otherwise, return the sales value. For the highest sales value, the logic is if the sales by period are the highest, then return the highest sales value, otherwise, return blank. For the lowest sales value, the logic is similar to the highest sales. The only difference is it test for the lowest sales instead of highest sales. The second last column is to calculate the forecast range. The logic statement in the formula is if the date is greater than the current period, then return the highest sales times 130% so that the horizontal line is always above the column charts, in otherwise, return blank. The last column is to calculate the position of the forecast label. The logic statement in the formula is if the date is the midpoint of the forecast range, then reduce the forecast range value by 10% so that the label will stay below the ceiling, in otherwise, return blank. If you inquiry the chart source, you will realize that I referenced the source twice, a one as the lollipop base and another as the lollipop top. Alternatively, you can inquiry it by selecting the chart contents. This is how the first chart is constructed. Let's move over to the second chart. Again, I hide the data behind the chart. The second chart is constructed with a scatter chart, which is not available in the pivot chart. This first column is the date column. The formula to get the list of dates is similar to the previous chart, but one difference is we stack the start and end date from the input field, being this is a scatter chart. I need a starting point to an end point, that is to construct the two vertical lines and a horizontal line. The total sales by periods formula is the same as the previous chart. The next column is the actual sales. The logic statement in the formula is if the date is before and inclusive of the current period from the input field, return the total sales, and otherwise, return blank. For the forecast column, the logic is similar to the actual. If the date is after the current period from the input field, return the total sales, and otherwise, return blank. The horizontal line column is a helper column to get the value for the horizontal line. The logic statement is if the date is not between the start and end date from the input field, return blank, and otherwise, return the highest sales value time 120%. The vertical line column is another helper column to get the value for the vertical line. There are duplicate rows for the start and end periods. The goal is to only return the value to the first row for the start period and the second row for the end period, so I test if the date is before the start date, and return the sales value from the next row. If the date is before the end date, return the sales value from the previous row. The next column is the changes line column, which calculates the line to show the changes starting from the selected start date to the selected end date. The conditional statement's logic is if the value is not available in the horizontal line column, return blank and if there is a value in the horizontal line column and nil in the vertical line column, return the value from the horizontal line column, and otherwise, return the value from the vertical line column. The last column is the changes label column, which calculates where the position of the changes label should be located. I set the header as the dynamic label input so that I can use it in the chart. Here are the three categories I rated between the two methods. For complexity, the pivot chart with DAX is much more complex than the Excel chart. For responsiveness, the Excel chart is much better than the pivot chart. However, if it is for a large data set, the pivot chart with DAX is the go-to tool in Excel. Thank you for watching, and I hope you find this video helpful. Please don't forget to click like if you like the video.